Hello, it's me, Johanna, and I'm back here today to explain the Psych IA. Specifically, this is part three that is all about the analysis. So this explains how to get all of the marks for the analysis, which is where you display your results from your replicated study. At the end of this video, there will be um, a playlist linked that has all of my psychology videos, including the other parts for the Psych IA. So if you have to go back and watch one, or go to part four when that is released, then you could always subscribe and always use that playlist. So there are six marks available for this criteria. So to get all of these six points, you have to show your descriptive and your inferential statistics. You have to show them in an appropriate way and apply them accurately to your hypothesis. Um, the graph has to be correctly presented and also has to address your hypothesis. The statistical findings have to be interpreted with regard to the data and linked to the hypothesis. So the last two points are fairly self-explanatory. I mean, you have to show your graph and you have to show your find, like, that's stuff we know how to do. However, you might be wondering what descriptive and inferential statistics are. Descriptive data is anything that is just summarizing your data. So this could be your a graph, or not a graph, sorry, a table with your raw data, or it could be some like simple calculations, like mean or standard deviation or something. Um, but it depends on the situation. And then inferential statistics are anything you're using to make a prediction. So if you're using a calculation to make the prediction, then that calculation is not descriptive, it's inferential, um, but usually your inferential statistics will be from your graph, because the graph is definitely being used to make a prediction. Now the points from this criteria will be exemplified in this essay. It's the same essay I've been using throughout all these videos, and it's linked in the description box below. It got 22 out of 22 marks. So let's get into it. So first of all, there's a heading. Always have your headings analysis. That's great. Then you know the examiner knows exactly what they're looking at. Sorry, that's just a random point that I'm putting in literally everywhere because it's really crucial that you make it as easy as possible for the examiner to understand what you're talking about. Anyhow, the next um, paragraph that is written here is very specific to the study that this essay is using, so I won't get into it. Um, but something important here is that they mention um, for raw data, see Appendix 4. And I think this is really important because you don't have to display your raw data like in the actual essay, but it does have to be mentioned, so it will have to be in your appendix or in the actual uh, essay if you want, but usually it'll be in the appendix. So make sure to have something where it says like raw data is an appendix, dot, 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 whatever, which number, I don't know. Um, then basically uh, there's a table 1. Remember that when you write table titles, they should be above the table, but when you write graph titles, they should be below the graph. So here they actually did wrong. They wrote graph one before the actual graph. So that's incorrect. You should actually put that below the graph, but above the table. So that's just an important little detail. So here they have the mean and they have the standard deviation. That's great, and they have it for the two different conditions. There's not really much more I have to say about that. Just make it as clear as possible. You know, a table is really good. It's simple. It's easy. Yeah, and you have to do um, sample, like example calculations, but that can also be in your appendix. So you'll be like, this is how I calculated the mean. Here's the formula, and then you do like one example of it, and then you have to do the same for standard deviation, but you do that in your appendix as well, so you don't actually have to show it here. Now, the only important thing to say about the graph is, first of all, you have to have titles for your different axes. So here they have number of words recalled, levels of processing. That's great. You have to have those titled. You don't need um, like a title on the graph because here they have two titles. They have graph one and then a title and then the same title beneath. You don't need to do that. You only need the one that says like graph one dot a comparison of the mean recall of words at different levels of processing. Um, so that is also a good title because it correctly addresses the hypothesis. If you're wondering how to do this, you're essentially just taking 
um, the dependent variable and then saying like, because that's the thing you're measuring. So you're like, how does the dependent variable compare between the two conditions? And then whatever your two conditions are. So you're, you're just, it's really simple. You really do that. Now to get to the actual paragraphs that are written. So in the paragraphs, all you have to do is basically summarize your data. So you say, this group had a higher mean than that group, da, da, da. you know, like normal things like that. So you say some of those numbers. And if the standard deviation is like super crazy, like it's super large, you can say like, oh, this could mean that my results are inaccurate because the data is super spread, da, 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 da. Then this is super crucial. You have to do some type of t-test, whether you do like an ANOVA or a t-test depends on how many groups you're comparing, but considering this is a psych IA, you're probably just doing a t-test between two groups. So a t-test will show you the p-value, and in psychology, the p-value has to be 0 0.05 or less. So here in this case, it's 0 0.0001, which means the data is like super significant. But in psychology, basically, if you have a higher number than 0 0.05, you should accept your null hypothesis, meaning that if it's higher than that number, your, your two conditions are equal. There is no difference between your two conditions. If it's lower than that number or equal to that number, that means that your conditions is significantly different, which means you should accept the alternative hypothesis. So essentially, you just have a little paragraph here where you write, I did a t-test, this was my p, well you don't say I, but you say a t-test was done, and this was the p-value, this p-value um, indicates that this data is super significant or not significant, so we can either accept or reject the null hypothesis, and remember to restate your hypothesis, don't restate it word for word, like write it again in your own words, but like just rephrase it. By writing this paragraph, it will be seen by the examiner as you making an interpretation. So really that part is quite simple. Also, you do the t-test online, like using an online calculator. You don't do it yourself because who knows the damn formulas for that, but yeah. So that was it for part three. Please like, subscribe, and comment um, to stay tuned and watch part four, which will be coming out later today. So. Goodbye. I hope you learned something.